Jets, we're back. You ready to rock? Ready to go. I'm always ready to rock. Here we go. Oh! Get Victor, get Victor! Get an ambulance. <laughs> get an ambulance. <laughs> Boom. Right off his stock. Straight off his melon. I can't believe he did that. <laughs> With a long range shot, the arm's up. It's a point. He was one of the great guys. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the grand final episode of Freddie and the Eight that has been one heck of a year in rugby league. And what a grand final we have coming your way exclusively live on Nine's Wide World of Sports on Sunday. Brad Fittler and Andrew Johns. Best week of the year, I reckon. Welcome. How are you, Matthew? You're going to get out more. <laughs> well, Christmas to New Year's a good time. From a football perspective. OK. <laughs> That's just poo-poo the start of the show, hasn't it? We've got a couple of very special guests coming up on Fred in the Eight today. One, a football fame. The other, the most high-profile guest this program has ever had. Eddie McGuire? No. Did Eddie see my message last week? I don't week? know. I don't know. He was he was going to come on. Yeah. Eddie knocked us back. Oh, he's the boss of uh, Collingwood. Used to be. Yeah, yeah not Brownie yet. is now. The other bloke that was at the meeting. Oh, Jeff Brown. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff Brown. He's yeah. now the boss. Funny blokes. Now, hopefully you subscribed to the NRL Online YouTube channel throughout the year and not missed anything that uh, has happened during the finals and there'll be plenty of great content throughout this week as well. Boys, what has been your highlight of 2023. There has been so much mm. to savour right throughout the year. Let's start with you, Freddie. What have you got? Mine has been the crowds. Yeah. Just in general, across the whole competition, I think some particular clubs have done better than others. Penrith have been one of them. They're always at the top. But watching the Wars kick in and the support there, I think Newcastle, you know, their last, I don't know, seven rounds, this was... Absolute highlight from a commentary point of view. Just, just be near Kalen as he's getting that attention and just watching the people so invested in their footy team. And so it's all about you build the atmospheres <laughs> of the game. That was good. You ste stepped away. Mm. What was the other one you did during the year where the same thing happened? I did Latrell. Latrell last year in the semi. That was last time. Yeah, I that didn't was so, see that. That was good. Mm. It was his, it's just his moment. And, and you know what? Like a lot of the teams. Fans have done that this year. There just seems to be a little bit more attachment. Um, and I think driven by, you know, Newcastle, mm. the Warriors, Penrith have been great. I think watching Suncorp on the weekend, the intensity of that crowd was great. Penrith in particular, I know I've had four proper sellouts during the year. Mm. And I think there was another couple of games where there's been less than 500 to 1,000 tickets still left. That, that's, that's astronomical. Well, that's like, you know, that's when you're talking about America. Like the Green Bay Packers, they, every game's just sold out. Mm. You know, Penrith's getting to that stage now where every game is just sold out. You, unless you've planned, you don't get a seat. Are they successful all the time, Green Bay? Yeah, they but the they're like a, Green Bay's like a little town. Really? Tiny little, you know, small town. Mm. And they, you know, they get 90,000 or so every single time they play at the ground. What about yours? Uh, mine's got to do with the crowd also. It was uh, the Knights-Canberra game when Dominic Young... Got the ball and went down the sideline. Everyone was on their feet and screaming. It just... That's the image of the year, isn't it? Oh, it's just... Look at it. It's just so good. You know, And well done to the Knights. You know what made that so good? Canberra took them out of play yeah. for like 30 minutes. Mm. Look at them. Shuckers. Totally took them out of play. And they were that ready to yell. They just needed someone to do something brilliant. How was this been on the sideline that day? It was awesome. Day? Yeah, and I had the same because I was sitting there across from the Andrew John stand yeah. and all the action, even in the first half, someone, Dominic took it, uh, someone took it down the left-hand side, might have been Marzu, and the crowd just went... Yeah. Phew. And then the other one, all the tries come oh, down Oh, that's there. when Marzu got that runaway. Yeah, all in front of the same people. That mm. was like your, your loyalty. That's the Andrew John stand. All the action happened in front of the, mm. the same stand. It'd be nice yeah. to be all out in there. Is that, is that the best game all year? Well, like, I... When, when you're asked to think about these things without much notice, you kind of think back to the most recent one. I, I, that was an unbelievable afternoon of footy. Yeah. Had a lot. Had a, oh. l had a lot of twists and turns. Mm. And there was a lot on the line. And for a while, it looked like the night's going to get rolled. Yeah. yeah. I thought yeah, Canberra played good. their part perfectly. Oh, brilliant. They were awesome and played really good footy. Mm. Um, you know, completed high, kept it at a good standard because actually Newcastle... They faded, like they, you know, they they choked on it, yeah. mm. making plenty of errors, and then the brilliance. So I've gone a little bit 
left field for my whole lot of the year. I brought in the famous fat. Do you have a plan for Nathan Cleary? You don't worry about it? Just, just a general plan? He's not playing. <laughs> He's not playing. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. The staff obviously cleared you up for you. Is he not playing? <laughs> 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 If you're having that, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was gone. It never, ever gets old. Uh, not many people make Wayne Bennett giggle before a game. I hope I'm, uh, watch, I hope I'm watching that in 20 years. Oh, That'll be played for so Have you good. read the new Wayne Bennett book? I'm about to go away on Monday, I'll leave and I'm taking it I'd away. take another because you'll read it in a day or two. Right. Good read. Yeah. I'll be on a plane for 20 hours. Where are you Talks. going, Brad? Going to France. Oh. Who with? Young bloke. Oh, no, no, Marie. No, boys trip. <laughs> what about your voice, mate? No! Hey, Someone's on his tippy toes. Speaking, going, of, <laughs> speaking of rugby, <laughs> with the Wallabies? Mate, leave oh, them on. Don't pile on. But, uh, in fact, I think your allegiance is a split because I found out recently about Andrew that he's got a number of relatives in Wales who, mm. who actually beat the Wallabies. Yeah, who's so your Welsh cousin? Did you get any Meredith. cousins or Meredith. Meredith? Did you get any messages from anyone over in Wales? <laughs> no. The email I got from her had a list. <laughs> <laughs> if only you knew. Oh, what about? <laughs> I've got to if say, if only you knew. <laughs> the bossy union has to be called out. Hamish, Hamish McLennan. Yeah. Like he was so. What about Eddie? He's lining up a job before he gets overseas. And he was so gun ho about that. I remember. He, I remember there was a comment he made where he said, uh, talking about the scrums, comparing the scrums, and then. If we did any good of that, he was going to have a spelling contest. Hmm. See if we could beat us in a spelling hmm. contest. I think sort we, of gave, insinuating that I think we, we go better in, the, uh, in maths yeah. at the moment <laughs> of how much rugby league's generating compared to. Oh, wow. Don't I mean, join in the pylon. Uh, not many people get the honour of lifting a premiership trophy. You've both had the honour of doing it. Can you explain the emotions that are associated with this moment? No, you can't. It's hard to put into words what it means. It's the culmination of so much hard work, it's not just from the playing group, but from everyone involved mate, in the club. It's a lifetime mm. of dedication to your craft. Mm. That took me seven years at the Roosters to get that. Mm. Seven years. Do you ever think it was going to happen? No, oh, we well, starting to lose. The year before, I just had a bad year. I just, my head wasn't there, but it took a long time. Wow. It took a long time. You to really get love that, that trophy, Andrew. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's all that face. That's what happens when you don't sleep for three days. <laughs> oh, the celebrations are, are all time as well. Now, this fan, on the subject of passionate fans, we saw them um, at Newcastle. Now, look at this bloke. This is in the US. Patriots versus the Jets over the weekend. His teeth popped His out. His teeth fell out. <laughs> <laughs> they don't happen anymore. People don't have fake teeth. Look out. False teeth, do they? Yeah. No, no, they get those... Um... Oh, I thought they would fill it on the ground. Oh, oh, they just I, out of the I know for a fact that people still get false teeth. Mm. No, no, but they get the ones that drill in. They're, they're the ones I've got. So have I. Mm. Which ones are yours? yours? Two front ones. I went to the Channel 9 dentist. No, yeah. I, got, I got eight. Have you? Yeah. Well, my teeth are like baked beans. I'll tell you, I'll tell you who's got some great dental work. Big Billy Mason. They don't. He they, hates it. Does he? Yeah, he don't, don't bag his teeth. Oh, I'm not going to... I love... Oh, no, I'm not bagging them. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, they look fantastic. <laughs> Moonwalking. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Uh, yesterday's hero. Surely we've come up with something that stumps the boys for the grand final episode. There's a big reflection on this TV. It's going to take away from Good. It. Only five minutes remain. Where's Ben? Webkey! The big Ukrainian. Oh. Casey Maguire. Neville Costigan. No, no. Well, they're a left-hander. Who is it? That's the same side, eh? The same? Must have been a lean of Sam side, eh? He was on the Atkins off float. Oh, Sammy! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sammy! Look at the hair. Yeah, what about it? He's one of our high-profile guests for the grand final show. What, the, what about the friend? Welcome, of bro. Yeah, I know. He used to be good, and then it kind of um, didn't go so good. <laughs> you look good with the short. Where'd you get Thanks, rid of the mate. big, the big, big mop? Oh. 
towards the end of my career, I, I cut it shorter. But uh, when I when I retired, I shaved it off. Did you have hair like that ever since you were a kid? Uh, nah. So I probably started growing it like like long, long in high school. Okay. Yeah. Did you anticipate coming on this show talking about your hair for five minutes? <laughs> no, it's all here on my chest. Now. <laughs> you know, Sam, Sam played in um, both of the Brisbane's last two grand final appearances. I did. I did. did you? Yeah. Oh, Nine six. years apart. Yeah. Well, I think you were just talking so about 06, how hard. You won. Yeah, 21. Mm. I was only 21, just a kid. Shane Webke's last game. Yeah. Did you start or come off the bench? I started back yeah. row. Yeah, and then um, kind of moved around a bit, and then. Oh. That's uh, when Webby had one of those goalposts on his arm. Is that when he played with a broken arm? Yeah. Oh, probably. So, I, I, yeah. I can remember some stories of those old fellas. I remember Petro had to do push-ups on the sideline once, so he, he came off and broke his arm. And then the radio up to Wayne Bennett up the top. You know, we need Petro back out there. Is he all good to go? And they said, oh, if... so the doctor on the sideline said, if you can do push-ups, you can go back out there. Oh. He did 10 push-ups on the sideline. We're back out there with a broken arm. So that, 2006, not a bad pack. Webke, Sivna Siva, yourself, Brad Thorne. Yep. Tony Carroll. <laughs> Tony Carroll. Your bench yeah. would have been, uh, was yeah. Carlaw still there? Dane Carlaw? Yeah, Dane Carlaw, Casey Maguire, Corey Parker. Oh, ball. <laughs> Lucky. Yeah, I remember that. That was off a scrum, that try. Casey McGuire throws Casey it over the head. This is Tatey, Tatey scores this one, doesn't he? Yeah. Actually, you, you smashed us in the prelim. We lost Bedsy, I think, of suspension. It was, the game was on the line for 60. Then you just blew us away. And there's Lockie, That's the man of the moment, the as deal. always. Is that Hodge, was... Sorry, is that Hodge played fullback? Hodge played fullback, yeah. and, and mm. he played fullback. Uh, it might have been in the game before as well. Uh, against, the, the against the Bulldogs. Mm. Yeah. A big crowd at, at Broncos training. These, they, in fact, the, both the open training sessions got big crowds. Yeah, so they actually had to move it from the new facility across the road to the old facility because there's a bit of a bit of a park there and uh, mm -hmm. more opportunity to fit more fans in. So, um, yeah, they were out in numbers. And, and it's, been, it's been a buzz in Brisbane. It's been absolutely great to see. And, um, you know, our, our mates across the river as well. And the, yeah. And the Lions are, are heading to the grand final. They play on the sad day, so I'm sure a few of the boys will be watching that game. They've got a bit of a connection. A um, couple of rats there are good friends. So mm. Adam Reynolds and uh, Reese Walsh are good friends with uh, uh, Charlie Cameron over there at the oh, right. Lions. So yeah, they'll um, they'll be watching that game for sure. Mm. What well, um, looking back at grand finals? So when you look at the Broncos side, two players have played in grand finals. The halfback and Kirk Capewell. Yeah. If you look at Penrith, 13 players have played in grand finals. I think eight of them have played in all four. Yeah. So what sort of an advantage do you think that is? I think it's a massive advantage. Yeah. yeah. They know what the whole week's about. They almost know how the week plays out. So, you know, for a lot of the young guys at the Broncos, they've got no idea what a grand final week looks like. They're, they're rolling in wide-eyed and bushy-tailed and... Just Ready to go. It, I don't know what it is with these young kids these days. They, they, they have no sense of occasion. Every game is just a game. They just go out and play and they enjoy it. And I, I don't know whether that's a, yeah. a good thing or a bad thing. A sometimes. lot of them have played Origin, though. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a big one. Yeah. They don't need to prepare. What, what about when you were playing the travel? Coming to bring, um, grand final breakfast, is that that's still. They don't do it anymore. No, or no. fan days or something. So almost, they have to fly back and. Yeah, we almost. Uh, because I, I think the Storm that year did the travel back and forward. Yeah. And we played them in the grand final in 06. Mm -hmm. And they came to the breakfast. They flew back to Melbourne. They flew back to Sydney. Mm. We just based ourselves at Bondi yeah. the whole time. Wayne was down there and his budgie smugglers loving himself. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Bit of gravity there. Sorry. He actually was. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Plums to the <laughs> knees. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. 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 Yeah. Kangaroo. <laughs> Grant. Bad grandpa. Yeah. You know, that scene where he's <laughs> lying there and they're just hanging there. Anyway, <laughs> like it's been a hell of a turnaround, Sammy, hasn't it? I mean, there was Wooden Spoon in. Three years ago. Three years ago. I mean, it, I mean, no one would ever have imagined the Broncos would get the Wooden Spoon. No, but to no. turn it around, and under the coaching of Kevin Walters, yeah. has been a remarkable effort. There's a couple of guys in the team, too, that were there when they yeah. won the Wooden Spoon. You can't really say win the Wooden Spoon, but that's what they did. Um, you had Jordan Ricky playing that year. You had um, uh, Payne Haas. Patrick Carrigan. Patrick Carrigan. Um, but, you, you know, it's, it, it's really good to see that turnaround. And I think if, Ke if Kevy's done anything, he's 
he's brought them together as as a group of mates, and they they all enjoy each other's company. They're they're hanging out, they're going to the beach together on their days off, they're playing golf, and mm. yeah, it's, it's really good to see. The one thing they do do, like outside Kevy, you've got some really experienced coaches, a lot of coaches that have been to grand finals. Yeah. You've got Lee Breeze from England. Who's played uh, a thousand football games. Kick John, John, John Cartwright. Yeah. Kevy's obviously. Kicked five in one game. Five, holds the world. And they lost. <laughs> and they lost. Yeah. <laughs> Kicked five, five field goals, field goals in, in one game and he lost. Oh, why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think his dad said to him, "Oh, don't go down a, don't go down and, and be in that 20 metres over and there. Not come away with points. Take away any points. So <laughs> five field goals. And, He's yeah. got the worst body I've ever played with. When I played with him after the first game, he took his shit away, mate. Skinny fat, <laughs> skinny, and then just this little pod. Pregnant greyhound. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah. We just saw some vision there of Kevin Mulders. Won six grand finals as a player. Yeah. That's an incredible yeah. record." Yeah. And look, in, in Brisbane's history, and number six is Darren Lockyer. We saw him there. And Ezra Mann, what a, what a star he's turned out to be. We even think, so three years ago, the, the Broncos are winning the wooden spoon. Three years ago, Ezra Mann's at, uh, at Suncorp Stadium dancing. So it's, with, really, with an Indigenous dance group he, before the Indigenous. Wow. He's Torres Strait, yeah. yeah. Torres You're Torres Strait. Yeah. So have you got like a... Um, you know, a, a mentor a sort a of... Oh, no. No, no, like a... Me, do you mentor him in any way? Uh, I, I go in and check on uh, the guys and see how they're going. There's probably a couple of guys who I've got a bit of a connection with. Um, Ezra's one of those one yeah. of those players. Uh, Jordan Ricky as well. Um, but I just try to show face as much as possible. Um, there's nothing official there. I'm not getting paid to do the job, mm. but I, I just do it because I, I'm... I'm proud of the club Ezra's and passionate about the club. I reckon he's one of the best defensive halves in the comp. Yeah. He jams blows. He jammed yeah. a couple on the weekend. Unreal balance. Yeah. It's just oh, great balance. He takes it personal. So I think there was a, a few games back when they played against Melbourne Storm, Nelson just owned him yeah. and ran over him a thousand times. And then of the last kind of couple of games now they've played against Melbourne, he's made it. He's gone out of his way. Just to a get quick one on Ezra. Moving forward, could he be a halfback and run the show? Oh, I think under like um, an Adam Reynolds guidance and, and having Lee Breeze there is, mm. is brilliant. You've got Alfie and you've got Kevy, those halves um, that have run teams before. If he learns how to run the game, works a little bit more in his kicking game as well, I think that's, that's somewhere where he can uh, excel in and, and get better in. Mm. I think he can run the team easy. What about Herbie Farmworth? He was all strapped up yesterday. Yeah. Uh, is he OK? I'll, I'll have to put the, get the goanna oil out and go they, give him a rub. <laughs> I think it's, they said, it said tight. You got, tight with us. you got this goanna oil with you? <laughs> yeah. I, always, so I got a bad hip. I always got the goanna, goanna oil in my bag. <laughs> hey, before we go, rub. if you Brisbane... You your hip. <laughs> <laughs> if up. Brisbane wins... Yes, please. Will Daryl Lockyer join the celebrations? Oh, I hope so. When was the last time I, you I saw Daryl? He's bored now, When he? have you seen Daryl? Yeah, but it'd be good to see Daryl just, you know, come back down to the people. Yeah. 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 What have you got? I mean, you just spent a lot of time with him. I don't know how much time you spent socially with him. I spent a lot of time with Daryl and Darren. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. Daryl's yeah. better. Daryl's Darren, Darren's, Darryl's, Darryl's a lot of fun, yeah. <laughs> have you got Darren's Darryl as Darryl boring as batshit. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Lockie. Daryl's the best. <laughs> oh, I can remember, like, 08, he almost missed the World Cup in 2008 through injury, and it was a Mad Monday injury. <gasps> so we got knocked out by the Melbourne Storm. GI scored in the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And then they end up getting pumped the next week, so we, we weren't overly like worried about it. But um, we ended up back at Lockie's well, house. Well, actually, Cameron Smith got suspended because he grabbed your hair. No, nah, it was a. Uh, it was a. I don't know if it was a crusher, your hair or the... a crusher or a. Um, you did something you, you, you to you. Chicken wing. They've just got back to Daryl's house. You've yeah. interrupted him. Yeah. 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 What was right. Daryl doing? <laughs> well, I think I was eating goldfish at his house. <laughs> um, it happens. Fish yeah. called Wonder. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't quite. Swallowed the goldfish, but yeah, the pond had a fair workout. <laughs> but we end up at Lockie's house, and, and a lot of things used to go on at Lockie's house. It was good fun. Um, I think Andrew McCulloch um, went into the, the wine cellar at that point in time, opened a bottle of Grange, and spat it out and said, What is this? Tastes like <laughs> shit. Um, but we used to, so Lockie had this kind of three by three metre little bit of grass, you know, living in the suburbs, it's, you know, pretty tight yeah. houses, and he filled the backyard with a pool, so didn't have a lot of grass area. A little easement down the side where you could walk from the front of the house to the back of the house, probably a metre wide. 
And when you start at the front of the house with a basketball and you had to run down the side of the house <laughs> and try and touch the pool fence without getting hit. Oh. And I think it might have been Ashton Sims. Ashton Sims has come and put this big shoulder charge and lock him, like put him through the fence. <laughs> and and Law's come out and she's absolutely ripped us. What are you doing? He's got to play for Australia. <laughs> Were you there in Bali when Jimmy the... The, oh, the monkey the, came out? The rooster, out? no. The, oh, no, the rooster. Oh, no. Cock fight. <laughs> no. <laughs> Lockie used to do the dance. He'd get up and he'd dance He would like actually Jimmy. be Jimmy, the he'd rooster. Be, well, there was a time in Bali where he, he rocked up. The boys were at a bar somewhere. He had a monkey. He <laughs> rocked up with a monkey. And the monkey <laughs> smoking <laughs> darts. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope Daryl comes what a, out. <laughs> what great memories. Yeah. <laughs> he used if to have, indeed there are any. He used to have the old uh, footy bag full of dress-up kit too, which is... Oh, I've heard about that one. Yeah, it was, we're it was in, a lot of fun. We're in Barcelona and Daryl went and got a, a keeper's shirt on and with some gloves. Golf and then keeper. he'd find some something that looked like a goalkeeper. <laughs> we were having shots at him in the middle of Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming down, mate. Thanks Good for luck me. to the Bronx. It's going to be a Jimmy. cracking grand final luck, uh, on yeah. Sunday. Of course, you'll see it all here exclusively live on Nine. This is the battle we've all been waiting for. A shot. from greatness, wow. a dynasty on the line. A chance to make it a three-peat. The Broncos, they've waited 17 years. Brisbane fans in delirium. Two states, oh. two giants of footy. Incredible. The power of Queensland. The entertainers are back. Or the juggernaut. It's a Panther avalanche. Origin scores oh. will be settled. They're bang for blood. On the greatest stage of all. Listen to the crowd roar! It doesn't get any bigger. Game on again! The NRL Grand Final. Sunday. Exclusive live and free. On nine and nine now. The home of footy. Yes, it is a dream grand final. Undoubtedly the two best teams of the year. And those two men will have a big say. Nathan Cleary and Adam Reynolds. But that's just one of a number of enticing... Man-on-man -man clashes. You think about the fullbacks, the five-eighths. Front and rowers. Even, uh, well, the, the front, front rowers. Row, the middle the middle, the middle players. Front yeah. That's where the, the game's going. Carrigan and Yo. You look at the hookers. People don't, don't even talk about the hookers. Billy super. Walters scored the first try. Haas Flegler. Yeah. Leota. Fisher-Harris. Wingles will decide the game in a way, like, you know, whether they come up with their, you know, if they're catching their bombs and uh, they score a try with a kick or, you know, seal the opportunity. Cross the park. What are your thoughts on, on how this is going to play? I mean, the, the exciting thing, <coughs> I suppose, from an outsider is it's the most electrifying attacking team in Brisbane against the defensive wall mm. of Penrith. It's, 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 a, it's an amazing mixture. And who, which, which of those styles is going to prevail? Well, you want two, it's going to be very hot. Mm. Talking about kickoff time, it's going to be 28 degrees. I, I just think Penrith's defence, in the end, I think they can. They can uh, put pressure on Brisbane. I like Brisbane early in the week, but the longer the week's going on, I just think the defence of Penrith. They seem like they're unflappable, the Broncos. Yeah, the Broncos or the Panthers? The Broncos. Like, for young blokes who young haven't, been brash. In, for, haven't been in grand finals, only two players have played in the grand final, uh, Kirk Capewell and Adam Reynolds. I wonder how the end of the week, because what happens in grand final week at the start of it, you just think, we're winning this. Think how we're gonna, you know, what are we gonna do when we celebrate? And then as you get closer to the game, you start twitching, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you know, mm. a few doubts come in. Then it's about how you overcome those doubts. And Penrith, have, they know it. They know how to do it. Mm. It's Broncos will then but sort of go in and on, on the, the Sunday, nerves get to them. <coughs> on the Sunday footy show, myself, Billy, and, and you debated about how to defend Reece Walsh. The mm. amount of people who said to me that was sensational. Yeah. And still, I think about Ivan Cleary has moved Stephen Crichton from the right side to the left side. Yep. Now, that's the side um, Rhys Walsh yep. loves to come around there. Do you think that's deliberate? He's been putting him over there for ready for this challenge? I think he did it for Jerome for that game To last protect week. Jerome. Yeah, and then, well, because what happened is I think, I'm pretty sure it's Tungall's right, right and Jerome's left. Mm. 
So you're nearly inviting people to come there. So if you put two injured players together... But you think they'll go back to the old formation? If you go over Stephen's career, he has played left wing, left centre, right centre, right wing. He's played across the whole lot. What a player he is. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. But like I, the thing I brought up was in State of Origin, they jammed him. He had no time. He just went... He had Reece a split Walsh. second, Reese Walsh. Yeah. And he ended up in Cobbo and he broke a couple in of Adelaide. tackles. In Adelaide. To see, he should have got tackled, but... Uh, at the end of the day, he, he can do some things that no-one else has done before. I would love to be in the meetings out there mm. early in the week on the plan how to defend Rhys Walsh. Well, we spoke about it. If you don't have... And the beauty of James Fisher-Harris and Isaiah Yo is they have that knowledge and speed that they get up and put pressure on the early ball players. It's amazing the contrast in these two fullbacks too, isn't it? Well, they're they're totally they could not players. be any different, but... The value they add to both of their teams. And, and Edwards, with respect to the way he organises the Penrith defence, it is, it is absolutely imperative to their yeah. success. You, when, when he didn't play against oh. Para, round 26, I think it was, they got absolutely blown away. He's a front rower. He's a front rower, then he's the, like you said, he's the controller of their yeah. defence and their numbers. And he takes that tackle five hit more yeah. than anyone. Look at this play. And then he chases kicks. Yeah. And he circles around in attack and then gets on inside of Nathan and swings around the outside. His fitness level's incredible. Is it the old adage, Andrew, that it, to take Walsh and, and Mam and those attacking players out of the game, you've got, you, you, you have to win the battle in the middle? Middle. So if Penrith can get the better of the Brisbane pack, well, that win. limits their... They like, win. Yeah. yeah. The old saying, forwards decide who wins, backs decide by how much. Mm. Fisher, Harris, Leota, Yo. Them three up against Haas, Carrigan and Flegler. Who's got the advantage? And then the bench come on. They play a huge well, part of the moment. Let's talk about the middles. Who, who do you think? Well, they're totally different. One's an experienced team of all played in grand finals and the other one are these, the best young, young players in the young game. Terror the best young players in the game. Carrigan, Flegler, Payne. Mate, they're like, you know, they're all over 100 kilos. And well, the two front them. rowers are 115 kilos. The experience of Fisher-Harris on the weekend. Mate, over 20 minutes. 31 minutes. Search and destroy. 31 minutes. And then when Harry got on, he got to Harry about three or four times, knocked him over twice. And then he's work at marker. That's where you don't see. Like, you're not sitting there looking at Fisher-Harris, what he does at marker. Chase kicks, kickers, mm. does everything. Yeah. Just works. So he's one of 13 players in the Penrith team that have grand final experience. This is their fourth in a row, as, as you know. This is the evolution of the Penrith lineup from the 2020 grand final when they were beaten by Melbourne to today. So that's how they lined up on that night. Uh, at uh, at a core stadium, there's the changes. So, significant number of changes, but the core players, they all remain. Geez, uh, I reckon Young Mule. Yeah, but Cry uh, wasn't Croydon there in 2020? Hey, Croydon was there, no, no. so he just changed positions. He changed Naden, positions. Naden was there, wasn't he? Naden was on the bench. He changed positions. Geez, I, I feel a bit sorry for Zach Hosking. Yeah. Luke Garner's at 17. I just think he's versatility. Yeah. So Luke Garner has played twice now in the centres in a big game. Yeah, but Zach Hosking played in the centres. Yeah, I think they're just saying that Luke Garner makes sure he goes better at the centres. I feel like they may, they may actually trust both of them to play in the back row, or Zach Hosking's even more so. Mm. But Garner gives you ability off the bench, I think, just makes sure a little bit quicker, I'd say. Mm. Same yep. as Salmon. Salmon over the, sort of from halfway through the year, he was like your original number 14. Tyrone Peachy played that role a lot. They've got some depth, haven't they, well, Jack Cogger, he just, out. Jack Cogger aimed up. Jack Cogger made the difference. Mm. Where Killed. would this leave Penrith if they were to win this amongst the great teams? Bearing in mind it's been 40 years, this year, since Paris. Well, since the NRL really era, what's that, 98? It's the best team there. Look, we had the Melbourne Storm team that played four in a row. Yeah, that was 08, 09, around Six to there. nine. Oh, six to nine. Yeah. The Roosters team, they, they played We did three. four and five. And Just then, two. Then the more recent... Four grand finals in five years. OK. Then the more recent Roosters won back-to-back -back premierships. Mm. No, I think this would, this, this would be the best. You agree with that, Brad? So the one thing I do think is, through this era, there's, there's only been really a couple of teams, hasn't there? So there's been Penrith, Roosters, Melbourne. Over the... 25 years? Oh, no, over this last six years. OK. They've won the comp, yeah. pretty much. I think in different eras, like I think in those early years of 2000 and prior to that, there was like 10 good teams. Mm. You know, there was so, so you, many... Um, 
I just feel like teams have got to the top and they can stay there. I think in other eras, like mid-90s to like, you know, mid-2000s, it feels like everyone had a go. Mm. Every team was nearly in the grand final. But there was more, would you say there was more quality players? I think so. Yeah. I think so. I don't know what, I don't know why, but if you look between 05 and 2005, like everyone played in, in the grand final. Yeah. Like over the last 10 so years, Brisbane there's been won it five or six teams. Knights, Roosters and O2. You got 96, so 96 was Manly. Newcastle, Newcastle uh, Brisbane, yeah. Melbourne, Roosters, whatever. Mm. So, mm. Stephen Crichton scored three tries in three straight grand finals. I wonder if anyone's done four. Brett Kenny did six in three grand finals. Yeah, but I don't know if anyone scored. Has anyone scored in four straight grand finals? No, uh, no, that's I'll what get, they're talking about. Look at that. That would be. What about that for an effort if he was able to do it? It's going to be a, a very memorable night on Sunday. Did he play in two thousand? I'm getting confused. Yeah. In two thousand twenty, he did. Yeah, he scored three tries in three straight grand finals. Yeah. Yep. So I think, that was, I think I saw a list. Is there four people that have done it? So there Brett is... Kenny's done two tries in three years consecutively. Yes, but I'm wondering if anyone scored four tries or a try in mm. four straight grand finals. Surely not. Well, back to St George. Well, You'd have to go to St George, wouldn't you? Yeah. Back to the 50s. Well, it's a long, long time ago. We've had some fun. We haven't always made sense here on Fred in the Eighth. Believe it or not, here's some of the best bits. <laughs> <laughs> He's got, got a bit of the Richard Gears about him. The gerbil. Never heard that rumor. What? <laughs> you know the rumor about Richard Gear. Put a nail through his scrotum. <laughs> said, this is what I'll do to play in the city team. What? It was captain. Yeah. <laughs> <Made him captain. laughs> That's what happens when he gets thrown in a jail in Mexico. There was a dude in the corner. He was a <laughs> shocking look. Take your pants off. <laughs> How mm. bad my legs? They are old. <laughs> when you're with that. someone, someone drops their guts. Mm. And you go, oh, that stinks. And you go, I've got to have a smell. <laughs> other than humans, they're the only other animal that have sex, or mammal for have sex for pleasure. I'll tell you what, I've got to say, my llama proves that wrong. They're what? very horny and very aggressive. Aggressive. That detail around holding people down, getting to mark a slope, pulling each other off. It was, it was getting to the bordering on ridiculous. Oh, what? Pulling people off the tackle. Yes, a lot of laughs throughout the year here on Freddie and the Eighth. And also throughout the year at various times, we've gone to Andrew John's decrepit little black book to drag in some guests on this show. I'm very pleased to say <laughs> this next guest is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> we have reached... Dizzying new heights here on Freddie and the Eighth because our special guest for Grand Final Week, the nicest, the classiest man on Australian TV, the guru, Peter Overton. Welcome. Oh, Matt, what a welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for coming on. Well, you know, I love you blokes. I love rugby league. And well, I'm I, risking your reputation by coming on this show. I think, I think my reputation would have been shot if I was at Daryl's house <laughs> <Yeah>. with <laughs> Sam yeah. Thiday and the mob. Yeah. You know the expression, you lay down with dogs, you get fleas. Yeah. So very... This guy. <laughs> what, what, what did Anchorman and Ron Burgundy do for your career? <laughs> well, you know... <laughs> yeah. It's not, a, it's not something I'd say to a primary school and say, watch this, this is yeah. your... You know. <laughs> it's something I've never really um, indulged myself every Saturday night to say we much was, much, yeah, yeah. must watch Anchorman again. But, yeah, what is it? Uh, You'd be kind to each other. You'd be kind, Las Vegas. Uh, be kind to each other. Yeah, I, I don't know. San Diego. Word. San Diego. Yeah, poor old Rod. <coughs> Good actor, Will Ferrell. Mm. Now, Pete. Yes. Uh, people yeah. watching our show may or may not know. You started your glittering career in sport, and I think even before you got here, and I, did you? You worked at Sky Racing, didn't you? I did. I worked at TUE, yep. at a legendary Sydney radio station. Uh, I'm work experience every Saturday and Sunday for two years, Circa. twelve hours a day. What years? Oh, that was back... I was doing economics at Macquarie University. That was back in the 80s. And I used to collate sports results. And then I got a job at Sky Racing, mm -hmm. where I used to ho host five-state greyhound racing. You know, here's an updated market on the first at Wentworth Park. Five to one, six to one, seven to one, eight to one. About to jump at the Gabba, the green light's on. <laughs> Lewis rolling. We've lost sound, I'm going to have to call it. Sorry. The pink, the brown, the... the, the, the oh, sorry. Dividends are through on the third at oh. Angle Park in South Australia. <laughs> and I, and I, that's how it was. And I, I didn't know the front end of a dog from the back end of a dog. But it gave me all those skills. Yeah. You learn to ad lib. You mm. learn to pedal when things aren't happening, and that's what you have to do. What you guys have to do, you, when you do election coverages or whatever, you have to fill, fill, fill. Sometimes. Mm. So that's where I started, and then uh, I went to Channel Seven Adelaide for about eighteen months, and then 
33 years ago, only a couple of weeks ago, I turned up to Channel 9 Sydney. 33 years? Yeah, and I was a, a young sports reporter on the 6 o'clock news. Hendo read the news. Kenny Sutcliffe did the sport and, uh, and I, was, I was just hanging on by my fingernails as the, the junior sports reporter in that group. And uh, life has been great at this point. Oh, sports. absolutely. Yeah. So we've gone back into the archives. Oh, have you? We've got a surprise. We have archives oh, here. We have archives here, lots of them. Yeah. This uh, is Peter Overton's audition tape oh, from stop his it. high school days. Really? Despite... <laughs> Despite some... Op what, did, what was it again? Despite some optimistic predictions from some commentators, it appears this third cricket test is heading towards a draw. For Australia, the final two tests will be the deciding factor if the Ashes are to come home. Peter Overton, Sports Centre. Oh, oh. I would have got a, a hair endorsement. <laughs> yes. Tony and Guy or someone wouldn't have endorsed. Advanced hair. Sky <laughs> Racing actually sent that over to us. So oh, we thank them very we much. Them very well, much. you could tell the man was going to be a star off the bat. And how did you get into 60 Minutes? When, when was that? What year? Great question. It was 2000. I was at the Sydney Olympics reporting for news. I can, I can remember this as, as it was yesterday. And there were no smartphones then. I had an Ericsson phone with a rubber aerial. Remember <laughs> no, those yeah. And it rang and I, I answered it and uh, I said hello. And it was uh, the late John Westacott, who was a legendary executive producer of 60 Minutes. And he said, it's John Westacott here, Peter. And I said, oh, yes, John. And you sort of revered everyone at 60 Minutes when they came into the canteen, you stood back for them. And... Uh, he said, we need to have lunch. And I paused. I thought, oh, do I want to have lunch with me? So I said, I can in 10 days' time. And we went and had lunch. And uh, the rest is history. I had nearly a decade full-time travelling the world. Wow. Eight months of the year. It was full on. That we're, first flight was nice. Out of it, yeah, yeah we Oh, man. Yeah. We're, we're, I, I'm a homebody, so it mm. was... Uh, it was an anathema to me. Now, when, when people talk about 60 Minutes, they obviously talk about one of the interviews with Hollywood star... Tom Cruise, obviously. Oh, that's speak of the devil. Is um, is there anyone? Is there any story which stands out? Yeah, great question. Um, I get asked that a lot, and what I say is there are a few stories that stand out because of the human spirit. Um, Chris O'Brien, you might remember Chris, the head and neck surgeon that got cancer, and I reported on him from his diagnosis until his state funeral, and I just loved his confidence and his determination and his positivity. I remember saying to him, Chris, 99% of people die who have your disease, your brain cancer. And he said, well, I'm going to be in the 1% club. And I love that straight back at me. Mm. Um, a guy called Nick Vojcic, born without arms and legs. Um, I've done three stories on him out of Los Angeles. He's an Australian guy. Wow. Um, and, he, you know, you could curl up in a ball and say life's too hard, but he, he has embraced life. He's married with four kids... Wow. And just the most... He's a preacher and he's just the most engaging bloke. And uh, Paul de Gelder, the Navy diver, remember Paul? He lost his arm and his leg. Yeah. Yeah. by a bull shark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and, and I did the story on Paul and he was a hardcore SAS. Mm. Well, he was a, a clearance diver for the Navy, which is like the SAS in the Army. And he was hardcore. Mm. And I'll never forget... We, did, we could not be more different as human beings and we developed this um, lovely friendship. Uh, and he, you know... I've often said to him, your life, he's now huge in America. Well, like uh, Discovery Channel and all that sort of stuff. Inspirational speaker, yeah, that sort of thing. Amazing. Motivation. And I said, oh, you know, wow. you've lost your arm and your leg. I wonder what your life would have been like if you'd kept on. I haven't changed a bit over the years, Pete, either. What's the best part about work? Oh, this is TV? Origin. Could you able? God, that's doing State of Origin. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Who have I got there? Oh, Dean oh, Pay. Dean Pay. You know, Dean used to... I remember... Back in the day, you'd, there were no mobile phones, so you'd have to ring up the club to see if they could get a message to Dean Pay to see if I could interview him the next day. And he'd be... He, I remember he had an orange juice run, so I'd have to meet him at the corner of Smith and Jones Street <laughs> in Belmore. And there he... And, mate, could you put the back of the truck in? Yes, we can... Front, you know. Oh, isn't that good? That, that's how... That, there were no mobiles. There was no texting. There was no emailing. And you know what? And we still got it done. Yeah, we did. We still that's got it crazy done. crazy thing, Andrew. We so really they would, did. They don't want to be in phones from school... What if there's an emergency? Well, your parents called a school. Yeah. What it, about footy? Have you got a footy team? Well, I love the North Sydney Bears. Oh, mm. not yeah. another one. You and James Bracey. Yeah. James Bracey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. Both our news people are Bears fans. Yeah. The Bears. I went to North Sydney Boys High School. Greg Florimo was one of my... in my cohort. And we used to play uh, on North Sydney Oval, which was like playing on um, mm. boral concretes. That middle. It was awful. <laughs> you know, you'd lose more skin. But Greg was an inspiration. And I love the bears. Go and sit under the tree and, and watch them. 
You know, I remember Don McKinnon, you know, Marty Bella, Gary Larson, Flo, Jason Taylor, you know, Mark Soden. Mm. I did Mark Soden's testimonial and I, I think I got the last ever North Sydney Bears jumper signed before they disappeared. I've still got that at home in the well, garage. What about now? What team have you got a soft spot for? Yeah, great question. I love... I follow coaches now. So I, I really like Trent Robinson. Mm. Um, I think he's a... Uh, an inspirational bloke, the way he speaks. And I actually, at the Elton John concert, um, Jessica, my wife, and I were there and I probably had a couple of pinos and uh, and I saw him and I never met him. I, I think I might have fanboyed him a bit. But uh, <laughs> but I, I, just, I just said to him, you know, I, I follow you. I follow the Roosters mm. because of you. I've always loved John Cartwright. OK. And he's um, now with Kevin. Why? Why? Because I'll never forget as a young sports reporter going out to Penrith and... Uh, John was... I was, had to do a State of Origin interview because he was play, he played for Australia in Origin and so on. And he was really... He got that I was a young bloke and he, he really respected that I was doing my job. And he and I've never forgotten that. Oh, you know him well. Oh, he's a great man. And I bumped into him in Melbourne with Jessica probably, I'll say, 10 years ago. And I told him that story. So I've just quietly followed him. He's been to the Gold yeah. Coast. He's a real gentle bloke. For a bloke who was very... Man. You know, he grew up in St Mary's, pretty tough family. He's a real gentle bloke. Well, well and, and the other... I do, I do like... Um, I, Ivan Cleary, I think I remember interviewing him when he played for the Roosters, and and I'm just watching what he's done with that team out there. And I think his son's just exceptional mm. to watch. It's I took the girls, my daughters, there, 16 and 14, took them to watch Penrith play the Roosters earlier this year, and we're at the new Allianz Stadium, and I, it was just a joy to watch. It. I mean, the mm. Roosters got done, but it was a joy to watch that that Penrith machine mm. just a hell of a ground too, isn't it beautiful? Mm. But this oil, well-oiled machine. Amazing. Is there any story you wish you would have done? Which I would have done. During your 60 Minutes era. Well, I interviewed you during 60 mm. Minutes too. I'll never forget that. For oh, Craig Hamilton. Mm. And, and we yeah. talked about mental health. She, and Craig Hamilton's brought bringing a movie. Out a movie. Yeah, yeah, and Jessica's in that movie. OK, good. Because she talks a lot about mental health. I don't know that there's a story that I... <clears throat> we should have a Super League, Pete? <clears throat> yeah, that's, that was my sort of, I think, big break, if that makes yeah. sense. Um, I was a sports reporter and when the big first court decision came down... Um, I, we, we, you know, we broke into Young and the Restless. You didn't break into programming <laughs> then to do rolling coverage. Yep. And I, I sprinted out. It was like the O.J. Simpson trial in yep. Phillips Street, the satellite trucks and the crowds. And I got to wear... I think I got to wear first with the news that um, the ARL had won and Kerry Packer had won. Yep. And, it, and it was huge. I remember coming back to the old Channel 9 and going up to the bar and there was this round of... Everyone was on <laughs> full. Of spirits were high and... Graham Richardson said to me, you know, Kerry and I were watching it and that was, you know, that was a, a great moment for, for us and, you know, for you and I was right, right bloke, right place, right time. Mm. Now, Andrew's going to fulfil a lifelong dream here in a moment. You can go over to your, your wall. Because you, I don't... Obviously, you, you, you watch this show every week, Pete. Toenail um, polish on your toes? Yeah, it's a I'm even wearing footy boots. Absolutely. So he took... <laughs> maybe Brad... Brad, so Andrew told us a story last week about how he met with Eddie Maguire. Mm. And Jeff Brown. And, and, Jeff Jeff, Brown. And, and, and when Andrew was signing to, to come and work for Channel 9 and Eddie thought maybe he had a future in reading the news. Oh, OK. <laughs> okay. Which Andrew didn't and agree Andrew, with. Andrew turned around, he'd had about 20 schooners. <laughs> no, no, no. It was like 8 in the morning and I was still pissed. <laughs> okay. I had minimal sleep, which means right. zero. What, what had happened to put you in that position? Or was that just a typical... Oh, no, I was living was... in Newey and I come down to Sydney and oh, obviously right. got caught up with mates oh, and caught, yeah, yeah. one or a thousand. He gets yeah. excited. Didn't need accommodation in Sydney that That's night. That's correct. So, no, no. so uh, Andrew thinks he's <laughs> thinks he's essentially the, the, the Bureau of Meteorology oh, okay, and yeah. always gets it wrong. So if you wouldn't mind throwing to Andrew Johns with the okay. weather. It's time now for the weather. Here's the eighth. Thank you, Peter. Well, the first day of October, grand final day between Penrith and the Broncos. Unseasonally warm weather. 8am, it's going to be 19 degrees out at Homebush. By 11 o'clock, break out the sunscreen. 31 degrees. 2 o'clock, first game. Queensland Cup versus New South Wales Cup. 34 degrees. Stay hydrated, guys. And by 5 o'clock, 33 degrees. That's when the NRLW comes on. And then the big one, 8pm kick-off time. 28 degrees. Stay safe, stay well hydrated. And St Sydney... Stay classy. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. That is the news for this grand final day. I'm Peter Overton on behalf of Ron, the eighth, and myself. He's Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, you're a legend. Thank you so much for coming on Thank our award-winning show. Oh, I, lo I love well, it. Well, here you're tipping on Sunday.
I, I, I want the Panthers to win. I think they're just a hell of a story, and I think it's great for their community. Jeez, Although I'm huge on Kevin Walters. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm very pleased with how he's basically shut the knockers up. He really has. Yeah. Peter Overton, ladies and gentlemen, on Freddie and the Eighth. Huge crowd. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> and if you oh, want to see it. more of me doing the news, email Eddie Maguire. Yes. Oh, he's not running the show anymore. <laughs> no. Sneeze um, Mike. Mike sneeze Sneeze. Mike, yeah. it, Mike's in Bali at the moment. But email Mike. Thanks, hashtag. Thank what's the hashtag? Joey on the weather. Here come the Titans. Hannah Southwell's turn to lead out the Knights. Yeah, Higgins out of dummy half. She got it. No, she got it. Run oh, it opens up. And the Titans score first. Oh, what an upload. Up there. Beach one. Can't get away from Brill. Passes to Hannah Southwell. Brilliant. Brown goes high. Parker waits underneath. And oh, oh Chapman. <laughs> Grabbing kick. Here they come. Oh, oh she got there. Jorgensen was in her peripheral. <laughs> it creates an error. Oh, and Dummy yes, off with the Side, she loves attacking there, and she gets there. Minos in a party, and it is the destiny for these Gold Coast Titans to reach the grand final. The Knights, through Davison, has got it. Stand up and cheer for your football team, Newcastle. The Titans get their chance, and they'll take on the Newcastle Knights. It's going to be a fantastic grand final in the NRLW. Newcastle trying to defend their title up against the Titans who finished in last position and have, they've tackled their way through to the grand final. What a performance, firstly, from the Gold Coast at the weekend to beat the Roosters. They kept the Roosters to zero. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Incredible performance. And, of course, Newcastle uh, last year took out the crown. They lost a few guns. Well, but still lost there. Millie. That was the big one. And our Millie next Ball. guest... Yeah. Romy Teitzel, who's with the Broncos now. We've, you've seen her during our uh, NRLW coverage as well. She's here to preview the grand final. Welcome, Romy. Hello. He's going? Excellent. Great to have you with us. Now, you were part of that Newcastle team last year and yourself and Millie left, as Andrew points out. But your old team is still there on grand final day. They are. Unfortunately, we lost to them on the weekend. But um, huge crowd there in Newcastle. We knew you were up for a big fight there. Um, passionate fans, and um, I think we broke the record with 12,500 at a standalone NRLW game. So it's great to see their quality side. They've they've kept that quality um, throughout the season, and they won the minor premiership, and they're soaring into the grand final. Hey, Romy, how hard's that been? Given the new teams, there's been so many girls moving clubs. How hard's that uh, sort of just trying to get continuity between clubs? Yeah, um, I think we'll, we'll be able to see some movement in the NRLW and I think it was a great thing um, with the expansion of the comp to see some big names moving to those, those new sides that came into the competition and I'm sure we're going to see that probably in the next one to two years as well with some girls coming and going into the NRLW squads and um, I think just creating some more depth is probably the main thing at the moment and having some competitions that run alongside the NRLW just to keep that quality high. I think this year we did see some injuries that um, did play a huge um, effect on the quality of the NRL and the quality of those squads as we moved into the finals. But NRL, uh, NRL, the Knights were lucky enough to maintain a lot of their squad moving mm. into the grand final. When you look at the Knights, we always talk about their, their real stars, their attacking players, Jesse Southwell, Tamika Upton. But for me, the best player this year has been Caitlin Johnson. Tell us about Caitlin. CJ, she, she's a powerhouse and um, I think on and off the field, the way that she trains and the way that she goes out onto the field each week and, and leads from the front. I think she started the season in second row and um, ended last season actually in second row and scoring a few tries there. She loved the opportunity to play on the edge, but I think she's really at home in the middle. She leads from the front. She has a great attitude and, and when you have a middle forward to do something like that, it's pretty easy for, like you just said, Jesse and Meeks to play off the back of that. What's it been like moving up to Brisbane? Uh, also, uh, you've gone to the powerhouse of women's football, the Brisbane Broncos. They've you know, won, I think, three competitions and they've been at the top for years. But then also being part of this club as they're going into their first grand final in the men's team for a long time. What's it been like living up in Brisbane and witnessing all this? 
Yeah, absolutely loving my time. I debuted for the club back in 2020 before I'm um, moving to Newcastle for two years. But Prince are recruited pretty well and I'm back here in Brisbane and absolutely loving my time. I, I work in a community role here with the Broncos as well. So um, I'm always out and about. Love love to see the work the Broncos do in the community and they're really passionate about that. And I think it's a great reflection of how, how much they do impact the community with the fans that have been here, not at the boys' training, trainings, but also just in and around football in, in Brisbane has been a huge thing. And um, we saw the Lions make it to the grand final as well. So Brisbane's absolutely pumping Huge reward for the club and the hard times that I think Rugby League does give you, but the Brisbane Broncos have a passionate fan base and um, I'm excited to see them play on Sunday. Uh, I've got a brain fade at the moment. The young 5'8 for the Titans, uh, the young Cook Island um, girl, where's the headgear? Yep, Shante. Yeah, Shante. Have you seen her play? Mm. It is silky, her ball playing. Do you think she could be the difference on Sunday between the Titans and the Knights? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, her and Loz, I don't think, would have practised too much in pre-season, but unfortunate for the injury for Fui to end her season in round one and then Loz to step up and move out of hooker. I think they've created a great relationship there and they both bring something very different. But I agree, she is a very silky player. She's actually quite a big girl too. I think she's should be close to six foot. I think she's a bit taller than me. But um, the ability she has not only with her kicking game but her ball playing as well, I think she she definitely will be the difference. She's pretty deceiving with the footy. So who are you tipping the grand final? Oh, I think the Titans are on a, on a big high at the moment. Um, obviously, like you said, they ended the season last year at last and I think they've gone into the semi-final and now the grand final with some um, great momentum and they've got some big players that will leave from the front with Georgia Hale in the middle and Shannon Marto. I think... They have great experience in the forward pack and they'll be the difference on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Lovely to talk to you, Romy. Thanks very much for giving you some time and enjoy the grand final, even though the Broncos aren't going to be there this year. No worries. Thank you very much. Romy Teitzel joining us, star of the NRLW. The Broncos not there in the NRLW grand final and coverage of that starts at 3 o'clock, by the way, but they are there for the boys. We've spoken about the game in depth. Get your tips. What about a scoreline and a Clive Churchill medalist as well from each of you? Well, I've flipped the other way. I was tipping the Broncos after the weekend. I thought they'd their speed, but the more I think of it, I think the defence for the Penrith can get up in their face, and I think you know the cool head and the control of Nathan. So I, I think Penrith by two, and I got Clive Churchill to Nathan Cleary. I'll go. I reckon. I'll, I reckon there'll be some tries. I reckon will get up to around twenty. You know, twenty four, twenty eight. Yeah. So about five tries. 24, 24. Uh, around there, I think. I think the leader will be 28, 28 points. Right. And I feel like uh, I reckon Liam Martin. I'm thinking he's a worker. He comes up with uh, brilliant plays. So I'm uh, going to go with Liam Martin. I, this could be one of the great grand finals. It really could. Because you've got two different styles. Yeah. Brisbane will go in with that attacking offload footy, and if it sticks, if those, if all those offloads stick, I, th I think they win. But if they drop some of those balls, which they did against the Warriors, I think they made not nine errors. Do you reckon Jesse Arthur's definitely for the wing? Yeah. Do you reckon Corey Oates? Corey Oates no, is sitting I think at Jesse nine. Jesse hasn't played him for weeks. No. I just keep coming back to that stat that we talk about. With, not, with Penrith's defence, it's like 13 points per game overall. But against top eight teams... Eight. Eight points. Mm. Well, that, that, is, that is remarkable. Mm. Two tries. Well, they announced but, the ref. But, but, the but. ref will real play a big part. Brisbane yeah. play a different He gets in style. and penalises and, you know, I think... What are you, uh, what are you anticipating him? I've got no idea. I haven't, I, I, You'd I like to got, think the ref's going to let the grand well, final go. Well, that's the new referee. Adam G. Adam, Adam G. G, first time. First time. Congratulations. Whether, whether there'd be some nerves there from um, Adam. Anyway, he'll ref the game. But Brisbane play a style of play that worries Penrith, mm. the offloads. You can't beat them playing structured footy. Mm. So if the offloads stick, then I think... Brisbane win, but if the offloads don't stick, then Nathan will just strangle them. All Absolutely right. strangle them. It's a big day of rugby league, and we'll have everything covered here on Nine. There's the broadcast details. We're starting the day at 10 a.m. for goodness sakes. Sports Sunday from McCaw Stadium, then the Sunday footy show from 11, and we're straight into uh, NRL Grand Final Day coverage straight after that. The state championship final, <laughs> and uh, that clash, of course. Uh, is between South Sydney and the Brisbane Tigers. 
NRLW Grand Final and then at 6.30pm all the lead up to the kickoff in the big one, the Panthers versus wow. Brisbane. We've got player cam as well. Oh, Luan Walsh. Ooh. Love to watch the player cam of Reese Walsh mm. with the ground he's going to cover. Well, it won't be hard to pick him. He's the one with the pink. <laughs> He's the one just leaves a blur because he's so fast. Boys, thanks for a great year. It'll be great to see you out there on Sunday, and it's going to be a cracking grand final. I've got some words of wisdom thing. too. Oh, do you do? Right, excellent. Yeah. I've just wrote this down, so uh, can you do a little bit of fill? And uh, someone's got my. Yeah, um, you left your rundown on your desk. My rundown. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here it is. Save it for next. If you want to be happy, stop complaining. There. You are. There's a great way to end Fred in the 8th for 2028. Uh, 2028. 2023. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye. With the finals around the corner, NRL on 9 has your cover. From match highlights, press conferences, and don't forget, Fred in the 8th. Of course. NRL on 9 has you covered for everything. One-stop shop. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a moment.